You know, I think this is gonna be our best Christmas ever. The Philippines probably has one of the most unique Christmas celebrations in the world. Add the fact that it has been celebrated by Filipinos for hundreds of years, and we have a Christmas story full of scintillating stories for ourselves. Here are some interesting facts you may or may not heard about Christmas in the Philippines. <laughs> Caroling in Spanish Songs Have you heard the story that they're telling about Bethlehem? Have you heard, Have you heard the story of the Jesus child? Nowadays, we often hear people singing Christmas in English, Tagalog, or some other native dialect. However, there used to be a time when singing such songs were done in Spanish. During the period of colonial Philippines, Spanish carols or villancico were initially only done during mass but soon found their way into the streets due to their popularity. Aren't I the popular one? To the clergy's disdain, some of the more naughty carolers would insert less than devout lines and green jokes in the lyrics. Villancico went out of style when Spanish rule ended, paving the way for carols done in English and the vernacular. Oh, what fun it is to ride and <laughs> the first ever Filipino Christmas cards came out in the 1950s. I gave the guy the, the Christmas card. I didn't know he put Happy Holidays on there. With the arrival of the Americans came, of course, the Americanization of the Filipino way of celebrating Christmas, including the custom of giving greeting cards. Usually, these cards contain drawings of Santa Claus, Christmas trees, and snow themes reminiscent of an American-style Christmas. Do you want to build a snowman? However, Manuel Rodriguez Sr., widely regarded as the father of contemporary printmaking in the Philippines, produced what could be described as the first truly Filipino-themed Christmas cards in the 1950s when he painstakingly printed a set containing pictures of the Simbanga Bay, Filipino churchgoers, carolers, and many more. Although he was at first afraid the concept wouldn't take off, Rodriguez saw his fears dissipate when his Christmas cards were well received due to their revolutionary and nationalistic stance. How come I didn't get a Christmas card? The Filipino way of leaving empty stockings. Put it in the stocking summer or I'm joining Facebook. <gasps> While we may be familiar with the Western tradition of leaving empty socks or stockings for Santa Claus to fill up with goodies, Little known is the fact that we Filipinos also have our own take on the tradition. A holdover from the Spanish era, the tradition is set during the Feast of the Three Kings when Filipino children would put out their newest or best polished shoes outside the door or window so the passing Three Kings could fill it up with treats. Okay, I'll put the Kanye canes in the stockings. You know, it's just like... Sometimes, children would also put out grass and water as their offering to the king's camels. Unfortunately, the tradition is practiced in only few parts of the country today. Whatever. All electronic items are going in the stocking. Now. The origins of parol. Then let there be light. Used to decorate homes and buildings, the parol is easily one of the most iconic symbols of the Filipino-style Christmas season. It's also surprising to know that early Filipinos based the parol on the Mexican piñata. The piñata! <laughs> The piñata itself originated from Italy, found its way to Spain, and then reached Mexico before finally coming to the Philippines. Additionally, during Spanish times, the parole was more than just a decoration. They were originally intended as lamps which lit the way for churchgoers attending early morning masses. Oh god, you're a morning person, aren't you? The first Christmas may have been celebrated before Magellan arrived. I could only imagine what it must have been like for them on that very first Christmas. One little known controversy about Christmas in the Philippines concerns whether an Italian priest managed to beat the Spaniards by more than two centuries in celebrating the archipelago's first Christmas. Oh, wow, wow. Christmas Eve. Father Odoric Matiusi, a Franciscan from Italy, was said to have administered a Misa de Gallo sometime between 1280 and 1320 AD in a place he called Talamasin, Malaysian for land of salt. Some believe Talamasin is none other than modern-day Pangasinan which means the place of salt making. There is even a monument in Bolinao where Father Odoric supposedly held his mass. 
However, it is also being disputed that the Italian friar never reached Pangasinan at all and the land of salt he may have been referring to was Borneo's Banjar Masin. Where's your Christmas spirit? Feeling more the spirit of Christmas? Show us some love by clicking the subscribe button and ring that bell to join our notification squad.